What's going on gang, Grunkawala here. And on today's video, we're going to talk about five items that you can use for self-defense when you're homeless. Now these five items, for the most part, are legal. They won't get you in trouble. And this is for countries or you know places where you can't have a gun or a knife or anything like that. So these are five items that you can have on you. And if you get searched by the police, there's nothing they can do, all right? So the first item is hairspray, okay? And I got this idea from one of the viewers. Hairspray or an aerosol, like deodorant, you know, fly spray, whatever the case may be. And the reason why you want that is it's not illegal to carry these items. And, you know, if you spray someone in the fucking face with that shit, that's it, mate, all right? You've got the few seconds to get away from the situation or get the jump on the attacker or attackers, all right? So aerosols, spray them in the eyes, just keep pumping them full of it, all right? Now, the second item is going to be a torch, all right? You want one of those long, heavy-duty torches that weigh a couple of pounds. Now, the reason why this is a good self-defense weapon is because if it's night time and you see someone coming up on you, Boom, shine that in their face. They're going to be stunned. Their eyes aren't going to be used to the light. So they're going to be temporarily blinded. And it also doubles up as a weapon, all right? You want those long, black, you know, heavy-duty flashlights. That way you stun them and then you bonk them over the head with it, all right? Now, the third item is... You know, it's a grey area depending on your situation because everyone's situation is different, but having a dog, okay? Now, the reason why having a dog is an amazing self-defense, you know, weapon, well, it could be a weapon depending on the breed, but it's an early warning system, all right? So let's say you're camping, you want to camp out, or, you know, you're in an alleyway, whatever the case may be, that dog is going to pick up on things that you wouldn't, it's going to be able to hear intruders coming, it's going to start barking, it'll start growling, and if you have a large dog, like a German Shepherd or something like that, then it can double as a self-defense weapon as well, all right? Having that early warning system could literally be, you know, the difference between life and death, all right? So that is why having a dog is vitally important. Now, the fourth item is either a lock or a rock or a, you know, a three-pack bar of soap and a sock, okay? You want to put that into a hiking sock. So you want like a nice, sturdy, you know, hiking wool sock. And you want to put, you know, something heavy in the bottom of it, like a lock or, you know, heavy-duty soap or, you know, you know, rock, whatever the case may be. A rock might be a bit sus because then it's like, oh, no, that's a weapon. You can't really explain why you would have a rock in a sock. But if you got a lock in a sock or soap in a sock, something like that, <clears throat> you can explain that, well, I, I just like to keep things in there, you know? I like to store things in the sock. You know, it might be weird to you, mate, but I'm out here on the streets and you got to make do of what you got to do. I don't expect you to understand, but that's the purpose. That's why there's a lock in that sock. That's why there's some soap in that sock. You know, that's why whatever other fist size heavy duty item that you can put in that sock, you know what I mean? Even some batteries. You get those nice chunky battery packs, whack one of them in there. And basically with the sock, you're now going to use it as a weapon, all right? Or like a, like a sling, like a mace type thing. And as you whack someone with that, it's going to stretch out and it's just going to add so much more force. And you can easily, um, you know, explain it away, all right? And if you get blood on it, whatever the case may be, you just throw it away, burn it, get another sock. It's a cheap, easy self-defense weapon and it's legal and you can explain it away, all right? Now I'll be back in a sec. All right, guys, and the fifth item is heavy rings, okay? You know, you ever see people walking around and they got those big metal rings, big chunky like dragon heads or skull heads or 
whatever the case may be. Big, chunky rings, all right? Because they're not only are they going to protect your hands, but they're going to have sharp, chunky edges protruding, and they're going to they're gonna double up as knuckle dusters, okay? So big, chunky rings. Usually, you can find them pretty cheap. You know, they're just made out of stainless steel. There's nothing fancy about them. You can sort of find them in smoke shops, you know, op shops, just... You know, you can probably get them on the internet if you have access to that. So big, chunky rings because they will decimate your opponent. They're going to add so much more. They're going to inflict so much more damage than just your normal fists. And they're going to help protect your hands a bit more. So that way you can keep on punching on, you know what I mean? And look, there's there's many different things. You know, you could have a bike chain, use that as a whip. Have, have a nice bike chain and put a lock on the end of it and use that as a whip, you know. If you want to be crazy, you could get some Zippo fluid, you know, one of the squeeze bottles, and you could squeeze that on the, the attacker or the threat and then, you know, turn a lighter on. Obviously, different methods carry different risks and have different severities. They have pros and cons. But the whole idea is that you want to be able to carry these self-defense items around and if you get pulled over by the police because if you're homeless you're probably going to get harassed by the police more often than not and you want to be and you know sometimes they'll go through your bag whatever depending on where you're from they either have the power or they don't have the power but if they do go through it it's like oh yep cool easily explainable items you know obviously if you're a bloke and you got hairspray you know, maybe get deodorant or, or bug spray or something like that. You know what I mean? So hopefully this video gives you guys some ideas, you know, because I know a lot of you, you know, don't have access to firearms, don't wish to own a firearm. You know, having a knife is illegal, especially in Australia. Like if you, even if you have a box cutter on you, you have to have an explanation. You have to have a reason as to why that box cutter is on you. Whether it's because you're heading to work or you're coming back from work, whatever the case may be, you know, fishing knives, things like that, where you've got to be fishing, right? And when you're homeless, it's kind of hard to be like, okay, I got this fillet knife, you know, I'm in the middle of the city or whatever, I don't have any fishing rods with me. It's harder to explain it away and you, you're trying to avoid, you know, criminal charges, but at the same time, you want to protect yourself because... The raw reality, the raw truth of the matter is if you are homeless, all your risk factors go up. Murder, disease, getting robbed, getting attacked, getting sexually assaulted. You know, every statistic goes up. Being homeless on the street, like, just doesn't do anything positive for you unless you got, like, a car or a van or something like that. But if you're sleeping on the street, in like a tent, or just out in the open, like I was, then yeah, being homeless does nothing for you, so you have to do what you've got to do to prevent bad things from happening, because your ch the chances of bad things happening to you go up a lot, you know what I mean, compared to the general population. So yeah, if you have any other ideas as well, feel free to leave a comment, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of other legal self-defense items you know, maybe in America you can have bear spray on you or pepper spray, things like that, or even a taser. Um, so, you know, a baton, whatever. I know in Australia it's really hard to have a weapon for self-defense, all right? In Australia it's quite hard, it's quite difficult to defend yourself legally and to have the items on you that are legal. So you've got to think outside the box and adapt and survive, you know what I mean? So yeah, so much love. Peace the fuck out. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. Shoutouts to Ronald Medina, first first subscriber to the channel. Shoutouts to the boys, hashtag Team Cooking. And shoutouts to the 1%ers that watch the entire video, which is pretty much the 8%ers now, which is pretty crazy. So fucking love yous. Stay tuned for further content. And I appreciate all of yous. Thank you very much.